Good morning, everybody. Jesus. You know, I just heard a testimony from Dawn, and Dawn said her sister, she was in the hospital, she had a, ma'am, your sister-in-law, I'm sorry, you're right, but her sister-in-law, and uh, that's her brother's wife, and I visited with her, but the youth, about three days before this happened, she had a feeding tube. The youth come and prayed for her, the young adults. She told me the youth. Now, I did get that part right. You, it was our young adult group. Young adults. All right. Okay, the young adults came to visit. What were their ages? Under 30. But she had a feeding tube three days. Three days later, she's up eating and at the camp, right? Stopped at the brisket house. Praise God. Now, if her stomach can take that after not eating all that period of time, we can do anything. Can't you? Christ Jesus. Amen. And I've got a brother back here in the back. He needs his eyes prayed for, and we're going to believe God for him. We're going to believe God for him in the name of Jesus. As a matter of fact, Brother Randy, would you just get that oil for me? We're just going to anoint him right now. We just need to. And y'all gather around. He cannot, he literally can't, he wants to be able to read his Bible. I think God wants to take care of that, don't you? 
in the name of Jesus. Let's, let's pray for him. Y'all just, whoever wants to gather around, we just do it. Oh, God. God, this request is for a good reason. God, you made the lame to walk. You made, made those that could not hear. God, they were able to hear. And those that could not see, you brought sight to the blind. Father, I plead your blood over him in the name of Jesus right now. By your stripes, he's healed in Jesus' name. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Miss Sharon here is going to have back surgery on Wednesday. She's going to have an extensive back surgery. We got uh, Tom. Tom is going to have his shoulder operating on on Tuesday. Very extensive surgery. We're praying for that. My wife is going to have a knee surgery. Uh, sometimes she's going to have to have a full knee replacement. So anybody else got surgery? In the name of Jesus, we well, praise God. Yes, uh, uh, Miss Fitzgerald over here, you're, you've got some problems. And also Richard, he's, uh, he's got uh, something in his kidneys in the name of Jesus. We're believing for that, Richard. So we do, we're just believing 100%. And if you want to be anointed with oil, we'll anoint you too because I know. Let's do that. Why don't you, you want that? Yeah, let's just do it right here. God, in the name of Jesus, we anoint Richard. We come against whatever's in here. And God, what is in his kidneys. And right now, for Dawn's mother, she's got the same problem. God, we're believing in the name of Jesus. We're believing in the name of Jesus. We're believing for back surgeries here in the name of Jesus. We're believing for these surgeries. We're believing for Brother Tom in Jesus' name. You got something on your heart there? In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Let's go ahead. Come on up, Tom. He wanted to be anointed with all. Richard, if you want to come up, you can. We done got you covered, though. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Anybody that wants to come up and be prayed for, this is a good time. God, we just believe. Tom's been through a lot. He's believing. You know, the doctor is saying these nerves, they don't know, but we know. Tom's believing God's report. Jesus said, he said, who would believe my report in the name of Jesus? God, I believe in the name of Jesus. 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 God, name of Jesus. God. go ahead, Brother Ben. Father God, right now, yes, just God. release your healing. Yes, your God. People. Father God, Jesus, yes, God. for those stripes, yes, God. We carried our pain, our sickness, yes, God. our diseases. Yes, God. Right now, we thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're working in yes, the backs. God. You're working in the shoulders. You're yes, working God. all through people's bodies in this house right now in Jesus' yes, name. God. We release your healing, and we yes, thank God. you, Lord Jesus, that by your stripes we are healed. Yes, we God. Are. Amen. Yes, God. Now, if I want to uh, live being low with my wife, I better go pray for her, Heaven. In the name of Jesus. God, I thank you for my wife. I plead your blood over her. God, we pray for knees. In the name of Jesus, you can heal it just like you can backs, anything else, before we even have surgery. In the name of Jesus, we claim that today. We give you praise and honor and glory. I just want to pray for youth right now. Regardless of what you're struggling with, regardless of what you're struggling with right now in the name of Jesus, we're believing for youth all over this building. You don't have to feel like you feel like today you're worth everything. So, Father, I give you the praise, the honor, and the glory, and I thank you for that. We believe for them in the name of Jesus, God. Yes, God. What about unspoken requests? Name of Jesus. Yes, your dad. He's got multiple fractures. God, I believe for her dad, in the name of Jesus, I believe for her dad. We, we, we give you praise and honor and glory for it. 
We believe for you on Facebook. We believe for you on YouTube. And we welcome you in the name of Jesus. And God, we give you praise and honor and glory. We thank you in the name of Jesus. Shelly Walton, God, we just believe in the name of Jesus. God, we place her at your feet in the name of Jesus. And we give you praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, who knows that we can continue in the moments of the Holy Ghost even in all things. In all things. In all things. No matter what it is. Even in announcements. All right. Let's get to business. <laughs> no. Um, so we have commencement this afternoon at 5. Uh, I believe that uh, finger food, sandwiches, uh, steaks, baked potatoes, uh, corn dogs. What'd you say? Amen. Amen. We got one amen. We're here for the food. No, I'm the children. Uh, help us, Jesus. Uh, I have a few things that I wanted to go over. That's the main announcement for today. I know uh, for Children's Church, Miss Donna said that she was working on some of the crafts over there. So when it comes time... Uh, she, she, I think she's already over there uh, working on that right now. So, uh, you know, as far as someone to walk them across or whatever, uh, be looking for the teacher. She's there. Uh, let me pull up the few other things that I had. So uh, we have uh, visitor cards, and if you'll notice, so this part, don't think when, when you hear visitor card that this does not have anything to do with you because it does. Okay, there are visitor cards in the back of the pews throughout the church. On the front row, there's two per little spot and uh, for the ones in front. So if you notice a visitor and uh, you recognize the fact that they're visiting, and listen, if you look at them and you say, well, I don't know if they're a visitor or not, it's okay. Don't be shy. Just start up a conversation. That's a part of being friendly. <laughs> You know, that, that's just something that, that happens. So if you're a visitor, fill that out. Put it in the offering as well. Uh, we're glad that you're here. We want to get to know you, whatever the case is. And for those of you in the church, we want you to operate and act on that as well. Welcome those that are visiting. Uh, uh, a few other things. So uh, for those of you that want to be uh, ushers, greeters, uh, parking lot attendants, follow-up team, uh, we also have security. If you want to be a part of that, uh, we've got uh, Brother Michael. He's standing there in the back with his hand up. You can go see him for ushers. Uh, uh, Brother Brandon Garner, uh, if you want to stand up, you can go see him for security. Uh, uh, it's a little bit. You can come see me, too, for security. Uh, it's a big fella. <laughs> Might be intimidating. Uh, and then uh, for greeters, we've got... Uh, the, uh, 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 Brother Chris, where's Brother Chris? Is he, there he is, Brother Chris. You can go see him or Brother Danny when Brother Danny's here, Mr. Danny Ferguson, or myself or Brother Lamar or Brother Andy. Uh, if you want to be a part of that, we've been having some meetings, uh, so it's not too late uh, to become a part of. So uh, go see those people, and then they'll orchestrate you from there. So uh, just, just know that. Uh, let's see, I believe... Uh, I believe that is most everything. It was mentioned that if you live in Wind Parish, okay, so Brother Lamar, uh, is he in here or did he step out? There he is. Brother, I'm sorry, you just blend in so well. Uh, so at one time, I remember when we had the road built, that's a miracle in itself. We spent a lot of time praying, believing, and speaking about that. Had the road, you know, put in, paved, and it's been smooth sailing ever since. But we want to add some uh, pavement on this side road that goes around beside our new building to keep the dust down. So that's going to become a prayer, a thought of prayer. And then also, if you live in Wynn Parish, put some feet to your prayer and call the police jury. So, really? Really? 
I mean, I mean it, really. If you live in Wynn Parish, you can call the police jury and just say, hey, and ask for that. We need, uh, you, you know, 10 miles. Oh, a tenth of a mile. Sorry. <laughs> a t- Right. Okay, so Tuesday night there's going to be a meeting with them. And but the point is, is Monday we Monday call. If you live in Wind Parish, call, because the more mouths, the more people that speak and talk and 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 whatnot, they'll understand that there is a need. There's a need, okay? And God will provide, okay? Uh, you know, no matter what, God will provide. So just uh, have that in 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 mind. Or strength in numbers. <laughs> strength in numbers. So we're going about to get into uh, strength in numbers. That's good. That's a perfect segue, as Brother Randy says, into tithes and offering. Strength in numbers. <laughs> so we need y'all to, uh, we're going to do our tithes and offerings. I don't have to explain that too thoroughly. But understand that it is a seed. Uh, you know, in the Bible it talks about a storehouse. A storehouse is a place that they would go and they, during the winter times, they would remove from the storehouse and that would feed them. So your seed, uh, you know, I think it's biblical sound that you give to a place that you're fed. And I think that we can all agree that we're fed here. This is a part of fed by Brother Andy, Brother Lamar. Uh, If anything, you're supported by those people, okay? Uh, I mean, at the bare minimum, they're there when you need them. So uh, just, just keep that in mind. And even for those young people we've talked about, young people don't have checkbooks, uh, figure out a way. Figure out a way to give. So, Lord, we just bless your name. We bless this offering. We bless this day. We bless these children. Uh, we bless everything, Lord, that you, you would have us to. We just bless it all. Bless your word. God, bless my soul, Lord. <laughs> we just lift you up, Jesus. And it's in your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen.
That's beautiful, always, Mama. Good morning, everybody. Well, we're going to change it up today. We ain't going to do none of this newfangled singing. We're going to throw it back to the old days. Me and Mama were talking on the way here that uh, some of the songs that God had impressed upon my heart this week to sing are some of the old stuff. And uh, by saying that, that kind of sounds condescending, but older hymns as they're, as they're known. Amen, right, Miss Jackie? I thought about you. Amen. And uh, so let's all stand and sing some good stuff, y'all. Uh, it's great to see you this morning. Let's stand on the solid rock, amen. sanctuary over there. Well, kind of like it anyway. Amen. Speaking of the old days, uh, there was a lady that some of you might not know, but I know a lot of you do remember, and that was Aunt Seal. Everybody remember Aunt Seal? That remembers Aunt Seal? <laughs> well, this is a song that I definitely wanted to do this morning, and it was her favorite song. And it's one of my favorite songs as well because, well, it means a lot to me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for everything. Amen. <laughs> Good place 
Crossroads is in this direction. There's an old sign there. It says Lucille Williams Road. She lived at the bottom of the hill. When the water came up, her house flooded. When the water went down, it dried out, and she lived there still. All alone for many, many, many years. In fact, she decided she was going to live to be 90 years old. Shortly after she was 90, she went home to be with the Lord. There was one thing about her. She loved her Lord Jesus. She was unique in the fact that she told you just exactly how the cat ate the cabbage about everything and would try to fix things sometimes <laughs> that actually kind of turned out a little common. You had to love her because she loved you as part of her loving Jesus. So I just wanted you to know a little bit about her. Thank you, Miss Kathy. We can learn a lot from our elders, can't we all? They've been through things that sometimes we don't even know about, but they've got that wisdom. I was fortunate enough in my life to be around and have a great man that helped raise me up and teach me a lot of great things. And it was my grandpa, and I'm thankful for that. I was actually able to see my great grandpa, and he was a he was a good man to me as well. But my grandfather helped me a lot. And uh, Miss uh, Miss Aunt Seal sat. I sat behind her, or or she sat behind me sometimes. And uh, that was whenever I was going through my younger days. But and uh, I was making some weird choices at the time. Uh, image wise anyway of course I don't do that anymore but uh, she certainly was a great person you know she was an, uh, uh, an older lady and she stood up she stood up for me and took up for me whenever a lot of people were uh, worried about me and uh, and you don't find that a lot amen so sometimes the older folks they look at the younger generations and think boy we ain't got much hope but she had a lot of hope and she was a great great lady 
and uh, I'm thankful that we're doing this song. So let's let's do the uh, let's do the, let's do it again. Let's do it again. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for all your blessings on me. As the world looks upon me, and as I struggle. Think 
Jesus. Let's turn to Psalms 1 to begin and I uh, want to say Happy Father's Day. You know, uh, these are good days in one respect. In another respect, we have people that don't have their fathers, I don't have my father, and all over the building we don't have our fathers, so uh, it's good, and it uh, sometimes it's uh, our sad days, and it should never be a sad day. But we know where they're at, we know what's going on in the name of Jesus. I know Brother Ricky, they just, he just lost his father just this week, and uh, so, but we know that the Bible says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you I'd go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I'll come again, and I will receive you that where I am. You may be also. <laughs> in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. Psalms 1 said, blessed is a man, and this can be a woman, uh, it can be a youth. Let me say something today, that everybody had the responsibility, the responsibilities are the same. The person that cleans the commode is the same as the person that stands behind this pulpit and what he had that the Lord has given him to do. It's an honorable thing. It's an honorable thing. And I want you to know today, as it is Father's Day, and uh, men do need to play their role. There's no question about it. But also, women need to play their role. I say a role. I play the role. That's the wrong. That's the wrong terminology, I guess. But you have a place, and you have a responsibility. And so we have seen here in this church the children 
that would come out and really cause revival to stir here. We've seen the youth that have come out and have really caused revival to stir here. We've seen the young adults come out and really cause revival. We've seen the older come out and really, we've seen that through the day. So every one of you had the place, and regardless of where you're at, if you're in with the Lord, uh, you're in the place that you should be. If you are in fellowship with Him, and the great part about this, if you're like me, and you have uh, gotten someone out of fellowship, you can get right back in. I just love the Lord. I just love the Lord because I don't have to work my way back in. I don't have to strive my way back in. I don't have to beg my way back in. All I have to do is turn to Him. He's always there for me. He loves me. He's given His life for me. He's given His life for you, for you use. He's given His life for you. You're worth something. You are somebody. You are who he says you are, and you can stand on that and believe in that today. You're a child, you can believe that. Wherever you're at today, you can believe that. The Bible says, blessed is the man, that word is happy. really means happy. It means contentment. It means peace. There's only one true peace and happiness that's in the Lord Jesus Christ. It's in fellowship with him. And don't expect somebody else to make you happy. You ought to be happy because you're in the Lord. And then you may help make whoever you're with, they will see, and maybe they can get happy in the Lord and learn where true contentment is. In the name of Jesus, right? Happy is the man. Happy is the woman. Happy is the... The young boy that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, or sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and the law does he meditate day and night. Happy is that man. In 1 Samuel 13, 14, I was just thinking about David. And David, the Bible says, he was a man after God's own heart. Saul had an opportunity, but this is what it says. But now thy kingdom shall not continue. He's speaking to Saul, and he said, The Lord has sought a man after his own heart. The Lord has commanded him to captain over his people, because thou hast not kept that which the Lord commanded thee. And so David is appointed king. Man, I love David. Randy, you going to get that thing for me? Yeah. Randy's almost as bad as I am. I don't know. We may be in bad shape about not remembering anything. (laughs) What, what what you say? Uh, is it, it, he, he's supposed to be my memory. In the name of Jesus. And so, the Bible says that David was the man. Psalm forty two one through two. At the heart panteth after the water brook. So my so panteth my soul after thee. My soul thirsteth for God, for the living God. Who shall I come and appear before God? Here's David speaking, and he's talking about the Lord. He's talking about his thirst for God. And as he speaks about that, he said his soul, the true him, panteth after God. You know why? When you look at David and you look at his life, what did the Lord see in him? And I've used these scriptures many, many times. Many times. The Bible says in Acts 15, 16 through 17, After this I will return, I will build again the tabernacle of David, which is fallen down, and I will build again the ruins thereof. And I thought about that tabernacle all the way through. I preached this many times, or it's not going to be the same. But yes, there will be a physical tabernacle, but it's also, when I look at this, there's a spiritual tabernacle. That's the spiritual tabernacle. And this spiritual tabernacle, when David looked at, when God looked at David, he saw David's heart. He saw a man who wanted him. And the Bible says that uh, in uh, Psalm 
in 1 Chronicles 16, 1, that they brought the ark of God, which represented the presence of God. They set it in the midst of a tent that David had pitched for it. And they offered burnt sacrifices and they peace offerings before God. Put the presence of God in a tent. And guess what? I've said so many times, that was so different because you had the priest, he had to come in there once a year and it was so guarded. But here God allowed this man to place it in a tent and they worship and they pray. That's a lot happened before this. David danced before God. We're going to look at that in just a moment. And there was a man who put his hand on the, on the ark of God, the presence of God, and he was struck dead. But here God allows David to put his presence inside a tent. You know why? Because David was a man after the heart of God. David was a man who spent time making musical instruments. He appointed men to do that. He appointed thousands of people to praise and worship the Lord. And the Bible said that they praised and worshiped him 24 hours a day, all night. We don't know how long this went on. And when I think of that, I think about us today, and it says in John that the hour cometh, and now is when true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeketh us to worship him. And back in that day, he was seeking somebody to worship him, and he found a man. He found a man who was after his own heart. And this man knew how to get to the heart of God. This man knew what it was like and how he could get to the heart of God. You know, if you want to get to my heart, there's certain things that, that I respond to, and there's certain things that God responds to, and he responds to praise and worship and honor and fellowship with him. And that's where I have uh, failed in the last uh, while. I'm going to get back out in that uh, RV, and I'm going to get some praise and worship music, and I'm going to begin to get back to the place that I need to be. Not, I'm not trying to work my way back anywhere. I just want to have fellowship with God. Amen. I just want to hear from God. I've heard from him many times, and I'm going to hear from him until the day I die. And something like this, if I, if I can admit that I, I haven't been in that place, and I can get, just step into it. I'm excited about already this morning, last night. First Chronicles 15, 16, And David spake to the chief of the Levites to appoint their brethren to be singers with instruments of music, palsies and harps and cymbals sounding by lifting up their voice with joy and they worship day and night. Amen. Boy, something when you look at this. I've said many times, what's going on in heaven? It is no question that uh, the Bible said uh, that they're praising and they're worshiping and they're around the throne of God. And Isaiah said that uh, there were those angels that were crying, Holy, holy, holy to the Lord of hosts. And the post of the door moved at the voice of them that cried, and the house was filled. The house was filled with smoke. And the Bible says in Revelation 19, 5 and 8, and a voice came out of the throne saying, Praise our God, all you servants and you that fear him, both small and great. And I heard it was a voice of a great multitude and the voice of many waters and the voice of mighty thunder and saying, Hallelujah, that's what's going on in heaven. Yeah. It is not going to be quiet there. It's going to be people who are excited, who are praising, who are worshiping their God. And we need to do it here too. And I'm not speaking today about primarily at all inside this church. I'm speaking about getting along with God in your prayer closet, begin to praise and worship, and it will carry over. But we're not saying this or doing this to get you to react here in this church. We want you to react to God in your prayer closet, and when you come here, it'll just spill over. Amen. Isn't that wonderful? Praise God. We're trying to teach our children. I think Ashley is doing a great job in the praise and worship part. And I want to say this. Everyone this week has done a wonderful job. They really have. This has been a trying time at our Bible school. 
but you teachers and every you men and everybody that's worked here, everyone that has served food, all the things that went on this week, even though the electricity went off, we used generators, we were still in here praising and worshiping, we were still studying, people were excited about our Lord and Master and Savior. I mean, it was exciting. It was exciting. It's exciting to see our children as they're coming up. I, you know, I, I, listened, I had a message at one time of the time to dance. This is the time to dance. This is the time to praise. This week, uh, we uh, taught them some things, and I just looked at this, and I, I just, when I thought about David, and when I thought about his life, almost every, I've looked over a lot of these, and almost every psalm, David uh, uh, was the one who orchestrated, who, who wrote it through the hand of God. If he didn't write it, his, uh, his uh, Asap, if I'm uh, pronouncing that right, he, Asap, was a Levite who was appointed by King David to serve as a worship leader in the tabernacle choir. They had a they, that, that choir would sing and praise God all night long. You remember when Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat, and folks, you're the choir out here, really. You're the choir out here. You voices that are out here, you're the choir. You're praising and you're worshiping. You're being led. David's job, this David back here, his job is to get you to respond and the Lord to come into your heart and you respond and you worship and you praise. Folks, we are on the verge of seeing a mighty God reach down into this congregation like we've never seen it before. I really believe that and I want to see it. Amen. I want to see it. I want to be a part of it. Miss Jackie wants to be a part of it. She's saying, hurry up <laughs> in the name of Jesus. That's what I'm saying. Hurry up. In the name of Jesus. But it's time. It's time to hurry up. This world is not going to get any better. But you and I are going to experience the presence of God. And we're going to see many come into that place. My happiness, my joy does not depend on what the world does. My happiness and joy depends on the Father that lives on the inside of me. And I want to get to his true heart. Well, some of these scriptures, and I'm just going to go over a couple of them. Well, probably all of them, but it won't take but a moment. In Psalm 63, 3, the Bible says, Because your love is better than life, my lips will praise and glorify you. When you look up this word, and I went through and looked up several of these. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, but the word is Shabak. It's action, it's a loud shout of praise. See, when we see the word praise and we look at it in our English language, if you'll go to the Strong's and Concordance, you'll see what it really means. It's much deeper, many of these words, than what we express. It meant something to them. It means something to us. It's an action, a loud shout of praise. expresses confidence in God's ability the word praise in Psalms 145.4, one generation shall praise and declare your works to another. They see something going on on the inside of you. Exalt and praise the Lord, Jerusalem. Praise your God. This is used 11 times in the word of God. And so there's a shout. There's, there's something to be excited about God. Amen. There's a time this our God is something to be excited about. People need to say that. And when I say the word praise, it's much deeper than just shouting. It's a life that you live on the outside. Even in Walmart, people ought to be able to see in you this praise and this worship. Amen. Now, Walmart is a great place to worship. Don't I worship in Walmart? Try to get her to, too, so in the name of Jesus. And at a ball game. At a ball game. Yeah, you should praise and worship, Roger, instead of hollering at the referee. You did. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. But if we can shout at a ball game, that's your point. We ought to be able to shout in the house of God, right? We got something to shout about. 
David, you remember the scripture, they're carrying the ark of God into, uh, and, and the guy puts his hand up on that. He struck dead. David stops, and he finds out what's wrong with this pitcher. David should have known what was wrong. He goes back and he sees how to carry this thing, this ark of God, this presence of God, and he, and, he, and he sees, you know, I need to get back to God here. And he did. And so every six paces, every six feet, uh, whatever the case is, it was a lot, they would sacrifice, and they get to a point there, and David danced before the Lord. Now the Bible says that he put on a linen ink pod. What he actually did was take off the king's robe, and the king never did that out in public. And he puts on a priestly robe because the real him is that priestly man that's on the inside of him. You know, the real you is who you are in God. I may be a pastor, but that should not define me. What should define me is who I am in Jesus Christ. You may be a police officer, and what, but what ought to define you is who you are in Jesus Christ. Amen. Whatever you are. The Bible says that David danced before the Lord with all his might. And the word here means to dance, to whirl, to move in a circle, to express joy, celebration, and confidence. Amen. And so there's a time to dance before the Lord. Amen. I want to see that in this generation. I want to say it's not a shame to dance before our Lord. And it's got to start in my prayer closet. I'm thinking to dance before the Lord in my prayer closet till I get to a point where it rolls off on me. Amen. In the name of Jesus. The next one is Barak. It's in Psalms 95, 6. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel. I know you can't see this anyway, so... Uh, I'm just reading it. And let us kneel, that word kneel is Barak, before the Lord and maker. They knew what it was like. They knew that they needed to kneel before the Lord. And yeah. maybe you can't kneel, you know. It's, it's not, you don't have to, but I can kneel, so I'm going to kneel before the Lord. Glenda, she's uh, having problems kneeling now. Maybe she'll be having to kneel after she gets this uh, knee. But I can kneel, and he's worth kneeling for, right? Amen. In the name of Jesus. That's what it meant. They knew. These people kneel before their Lord. They knew what it was like. The next one is another word. I'm not going to pronounce it, but the root of the word, hallelujah, which means praise, express joy, jubilation, and celebration. Right. Hallelujah. You know, in the hallelujah, it's the only word that everybody understands in one language. Is that right? If I'm wrong, just tell me yeah, I'm wrong. So, I mean, it, yeah. I can't say the only one, but one of the only ones. Yeah, one of the only ones. that means the same thing in every language. That's my understanding. Hallelujah. 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 And this word, hallelujah, in Psalms 104, 35, bless the Lord, O my soul, praise. See that word praise right there means, hey, it means hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hall so that word praise and that word hallelujah is being resounded right now in heaven. The word hallelujah right now in heaven, they're saying hallelujah. I love that, don't you? Amen. Praise God. Pastor, when you preach to the, to the guys in, in India, the ministers, yeah. they're, they're steady saying hallelujah, hallelujah. They all know that word. They all know that word in India. Yes, sir. And uh, Brother Randy is teaching some pastors in India over YouTube, and they're constantly saying hallelujah, he said. Hallelujah. hallelujah. It's, 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 it's wonderful. And then the word in Psalms 50, 23, whosoever offers a sacrifice of thanksgiving honors me, and to him who orders his way aright, I show the salvation of the Lord. One of these, one of these I know, this word, hallelujah, is used 165 times in the Word of God. I mean, that's really something. And this word, Barak, which expresses the, to kneel and express humility, is used 330 times in the Word of God. I'm going to try to put this together. I'm going to put 
just exactly this together for me and for whoever wants it. I want to go over this, and I want to get it in my heart. I want to get as close to God as I can. You see, this is what, to me, it's about. If I can have fellowship with God in my prayer closet, I don't have to be here to worship. I need to be in my prayer closet and have fellowship with the Master. And I've done that before. It's not that I haven't. But I'm just being straight with you. I haven't done it like I should here lately. I've got to get back. I've got to get back. Man, it's like food. It's like bread. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. I've got to get back. I've got to get some nourishment. I've got to get some food. This spiritual man is beginning to get weak. But right now, even as I speak, he's getting stronger and he's getting stronger. You see, there's something on the inside of me. It's called the Holy Ghost of God that is working on my spirit. And I'm getting stronger and stronger and stronger. I want to get closer and closer to God. See, we're all on the same level, folks. You look at me and you say, well, he ought to be close to God. Well, you ought to be close to God, too. You know, I mean, it's just, you ought to be close to God, too. This is not a priest. We don't have just a priest that you come to, you know, and you, we give a sacrifice. And we have a pastor and we have a, 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 a apostle. We have a prophet. And those people need nourishment. All right, this one appears 57 times. It expresses joy. It's in Psalm 22, 3, but you are holy, enthroned in praises of Israel. Amen. 57 times expresses joy. Amen. You know what true joy is? It's, it's in the Lord. It is a fruit of the Spirit. You can't produce joy. It is a fruit of the Spirit. Some people say, I have joy. And they're out there in a bar somewhere. They don't have joy. Joy is produced by the Holy, Holy Spirit. So is love. I love that, don't you? I've got something on me, in me that produces this. Well, I wanted to, to, to read this in Jehoshaphat. Before I do that, I, I want to say something about David. And David was a man after God's own heart. He's appointed king. But you know, when you look at David's life and his father's life, the truth of the matter is, he was really a failure as a father. And I've, I've been pretty bad myself. I'm not getting down on David. I'm just trying to show you something today. He had all these concubines. He had all his wives. And one of his... Uh, uh, sons raped his daughter and his other son was hated him for that and then he had a son try to take over his kingdom try to kill him and then he had Solomon who saw everything move of God and at the end of Solomon's life the Bible says that his wives he got mixed up and his wives carried him away into idolatry and worship right. and, it, and, and folks I didn't, don't blame everything on your dad. I'm not saying that. But it didn't help them to see him with thousands of concubines and thousands of wives. That part of his life was off track. So all I'm saying today is wherever you're at with God, just try to remember your family too. Because your family's important. And if you really, I say, say myself, I'm really right with God, I'll, my family will be taken care of one. It's something that I could be a man after God's own heart and be a failure in that respect. But the great part about that is, David did this. I love this. He, he repented. Before I read that, let me read this in Chronicles chapter 20, verse 12. You don't have to turn there, but Jehoshaphat, as he was faithful, he said, O our God, would I not judge them? For we have no might against this great comp company. That cometh against us. Neither know we what to do, but our eyes are upon thee. You know, Jehoshaphat, a great king. And here he is. He had, he had carried Israel out of all kind of stuff. But he had enough sense to know where his strength was coming from. He had enough sense right here to know 
don't take things in your own hand. He had enough sense to know that he had to hear from God. He had a sense enough to know that God was the one that needed to direct his path. And so he recognized and he called out to God and said, we have no night. We have no might. They did the same thing. The Bible says that they appointed a choir, didn't they? You remember that. He said, you won't need to fight. They appointed a choir, and they worship and praise God. Well, at the end of this, in Psalms 51, 1 through 4, of course, this is when David had messed up with Bathsheba. Psalms 51, 1 through, it's a psalm of David when Nathan the prophet came unto him after he had gone into Bathsheba. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according to the multitude of tender mercies, blot out my transgression. David, you come up. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. I don't know really what he meant by that, but my sin's gone. Against thee and thee only have I sinned. You know, that's where the rubber meets the road. David had man after God, regardless of what he had done, I sinned against you, God. I hurt you, God. I hurt you. When I got out of fellowship with the Savior, I was, I was hurting him. You know why? Because he loves me. Yeah. Because he loves me. He wants to put his arms around me. He's been there waiting on me with his arms out. He is the father waiting for the prodigal son to come back. And don't think I've, I hadn't done anything outside physical or anything. This is all an inside thing. You see what I mean? It's an inside thing. But I tell you what it do, it will result on the outside. One. Sooner or later. He said this. I have sinned and done evil in thy sight, thou, that thou might be justified when I speak it, and be clear when I judge it. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity. Let's all stand this morning. Let's just get close to God. Take this and use this and think about this and give God praise and just say, I want to get close to you, my Savior. I want to have fellowship with you. Go ahead. Thank you, Lord. Yes, God. I just want to thank you. Yes, we just want to thank you, God. I just want to thank you. Thank you. I just want to thank you. I just want to thank you. I just want, I want to take a little time right now to say thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. I just want, I want to take a little time right now to say thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. Thank you, thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you. Lord, I just want to thank you. Thank you, thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you. Lord, I just want to thank you. I just want to take a little time right now to say thank you, Lord. For all you've done for me, I just want, I want to take a little time right now to say thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. Oh, I just want to take a little time right now 
and say thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. Yes, I just want to take a little time right now and say thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. Thank you, Lord. For all you've done for me, thank you, thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, I just want to thank you, thank you, thank you. I just want to thank you. I just want to thank you. Amen. Bo just reminded me that the word go is in the Bible 1,400 times. So go. In the name of 